Hi everybody, I'm Dave Thomas and this time I'm building the Zephyr Junior by Apogee Components. And I've been looking forward to building this for quite some time. I use the full-size Zephyr as my level one high power rocket and I really liked it. It was just a really well-made rocket, really sturdy. And so when they came out with these, it was just a matter of time before I tried it. Um, and this is uh, a mid-power rocket using 24 millimeter rocket motors. So um, I don't know of any high-power 24 millimeter rocket motors. So this is going to be mid-power only. So let's go ahead and open this up. bit of damage here but depending on where this ends up we may be able to repair that otherwise I'm sure I can just call Apogee and get a replacement they have really good customer service okay so let's find a parts list here. body tube here 18 inches long um, we have the nose cone. Alright, we've got some basswood here. So this is going to be the fin stock. And looks like we actually have to assemble the fins here um, because I know this piece is going to go over here. So it will require a little bit of assembly. Alright, um, this is a display stand kit. Alright, then we've got some centering rings and a bulkhead, as well as another ring here. Okay, that's a 24 to 29 millimeter ring. Okay, we have a motor mount tube quarter inch launch lug. Looks like a pretty generous piece of Kevlar shock cord there. All right, vinyl decal set. And a parachute kit. All right, and then just a big plastic bag to keep it all in. All right, so let's see what we're going to be up against here. So the first thing we're going to do is assemble the fins. So I'm going to go ahead and put the rest of this stuff away and then we will get started. Now before we put the fins together here, um, I do want to take note here that this does not come with any form of engine retention. Okay, so it's just using um, friction fitting within the um, motor mount tube here. There's also no engine block, and so you would have to make um, an aft engine block on the motor by layering it, layering it with uh, masking tape, something like that. Okay, um, I am going to put on a screw-on motor retainer that Estes makes for 24 millimeter motor mounts. Okay, so just something to keep in mind. Um, alternatively, you could also use a uh, wire type motor retainer on this um, and then you just need to get one that's of the appropriate size okay so just be aware of that and maybe be thinking about that as you're building the rest of this model as to how you want engine retention to occur okay. so we will go ahead and start with the first step Okay, so we need to cut these out. Now what they show in the instructions is a little bit different. They have all the fins on one sheet. On this one, um, they're, each fin's uh, parts are on a separate sheet here. Okay, so go ahead and just cut out any remain... Oops, don't do that. Kind of slid a little bit there. Fortunately, the fillets will hide it. Alright, 
so that's one fin set and now I'm going to do the other two off camera here but I'll cut these out in the same manner once you have the fins cut out you'll need to use a little bit of sandpaper here uh, and just sand off the little nubs that were left over from the laser cutting process there all right, we'll do a more thorough sanding after these have been put together. All right, so for one fin. So when we put this together, um, this piece will go on here like that. Okay, and then this piece, I get it to go around the right way, no, there we go, okay, that's going to go in there, now there should not be a gap, I don't think, let me check, no, should not be a gap there, so this piece you may need to do a little extra sanding so that it fits. at here is this edge. I want that to be flush. If this has a little bit of space in it, we can fill it. That's pretty close. Uh, I may have to do some additional sanding back here once we get it together. And so when you glue this, you're going to want a flat surface and probably some sort of protection. And so I'm going to put down some waxed paper here. All right. I'm also going to make sure that I'm doing this in a good spot on my cutting mat here. I do have little glue blobs and such, and I prefer not to have those directly under. Okay. So here I'm going to use some wood glue. have some tissues or a rag handy there. Okay, so for this piece I just need to do the edges that come in contact with the main fin. Right, so that's going to go in here. So I'll get that squished in as best I can and then I'm going to squash it down from above here. Um, there is a little bit of difference in height there. Okay, and we'll put, have to do a little sanding on that. All right, and then we're also going to put some glue right here and right here. on as well. Again here I want to try and get the edges lined up as best that I can and then squash that down so it's level. Okay and then I'm going to repeat that for the other two fins first sanding them and then gluing them together. I'm going to do that off cam. While the glue on the fins is drying I'm going to move on to the motor mount here. And the first thing we need to do is mark the motor mount tube at half an inch from each end. Okay, so there's half an inch there. And then if I move that down a little bit, there's half an inch right there. Alright, and then we need the 
motor mount rings. Okay, now these are notched as if you would use them for uh, an engine retainer clip. And if you are going to use an engine retainer clip, you could probably use the notches that are made in this already. All right, but what they're going to do with at least the forward ring is pass the shock cord through that notch. Okay, so here um, I'm going to just dry fit this on. I'm going to call this the aft end because the forward end's got just a little bit of a crunch on it. Okay, so that's going to go on here at that point. Okay, and then on the forward end we're going to have the other one. And as you can see here, the shock cord is going to get tied around the motor mount tube and then it's going to pass through that notch okay and then the green ring here we're going to cut a notch on the inside of it we don't want to cut all the way through it but we do need some room for the shock cord to go through this as well Alright, and so with the shock cord coming up, it'll come through that notch, and this is going to be used to kind of lock everything in place. Okay, so when we're all done, it'll look like this and have a shock cord going through it. Right, I'm going to pull off the forward end here for a moment. Alright, and then we're going to put some glue in a ring the aft ring here. So I'll put it a little bit above my mark and then I'll push my ring through the glue and onto it. All right. And then we'll just take that and make a fillet out of it. Um, we don't want a really thick fillet there because we need to have room for the uh, engine retainer. pushing that forward again. So let's bring that back where it needs to be. Okay. And we'll let that sit for just a moment. All right, I'm going to take the shock cord here. And the first thing I'm going to do is take the two ends here and I'm just going to put a little bit of super glue on them and this just keeps the ends from fraying anymore and makes them easier to work with so we just got to put some on there and let it soak in and then you can immediately take a tissue or a paper towel and just pull it through that and get rid of the excess glue. Okay, and then I'm going to take my hobby knife here and just cut off the frayed area. Ouch! You know, stabbing your finger there is optional. All right, but there's still glue in this point, so it's not going to fray anymore. Same thing on this end. I'll try to do this without stabbing the finger. Okay. So now we need to put a loop in this. Okay. And one way to do that is you, if you're a, you tie two half hitches in this well used Boy Scout knot. There we go. Alright, 
and that will allow this to slip. Now I've got an awful lot of free length there. Let's see if I can bring that down a bit. Okay, now you want this uh, loose enough. that it can slide here. Okay, so once you got that, I'm going to go ahead and slide this over. And initially, I'm just going to snug it down there. Okay, then I'm going to take my other ring here. Move on to the next part of the instructions. Okay, we're going to pass the entire shock cord through the forward ring. All right, and we're going to stick it in that notch. Okay. Now, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to apply the glue to the inside this time so I don't get a big mess on the other side. And it's okay if you get the shock cord gluey. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and push that down until I get to my mark. Which I think is now covered in glue, but should be around right around in there. Okay, now I'm going to pull this up so that it becomes in embedded in the glue. Okay, now if this little free end is extending beyond the centering ring, I recommend cutting it off, but not all the way down to the knot. That way you won't have a chance of getting it stuck when you're inserting this into the body tube. Okay, and then Finally, I'm going to put on this ring, and it too needs to have the entire shock cord pass through it here. Okay, and then I'm going to find the notch there, and the shock cord is going to go through the notch. And then I'm just going to push this down a bit. I'm going to add some more glue around it. I'm going to pull that taut first. There we go. Okay, and then we'll just put a bead of glue around here. All right, and then holding that taut, push the ring down. into the glue and onto that forward ring. Okay, and then once more we can go ahead and just turn that into a fillet. And that's going to give us a really, really strong motor mount and shock cord anchor there. Okay, now I'm going to let that dry as well. Alright, now before I actually sand the fins. I'm using some wood filler paste here and I'm diluting that in water roughly one to one. And this will allow me to fill in the imperfections here including the the cracks in the seams of the glued on pieces there. So you want to mix this till it's about the consistency of paint. Alright, and so you can either use a paintbrush or just a cotton applicator like I've got here. Okay, and so I'm just going to start by filling in those seams.
Now, if you do happen to get it down in, like, in between that crack or something like that, that's fine. This stuff sands out really easily. So here, we, for the rest of it, just get a nice even coat. Now, since this is water-based, it's going to tend to warp the wood, since this is not plywood. And so what we'll want to do is cover both sides at the same time and dry this up on its edge. Okay, and now just prop this up on something. I've got a rocket display mount here that'll work. Okay, and I'm just going to let that dry up on its edge. And I'll do the other two fins in the same manner off camera. While I'm still waiting for the wood filler to dry, I'm going to go ahead and cut out the mount here. This is just a, a simple display mount. Just like with the fins, we need to go through and cut through all the little tabs left behind by the laser cutters. Instructions again. All right, this is pretty straightforward. All right, so I just need to put the three legs together and then add the circular pieces, and that's pretty much it. And then you can run glue in between the joints to make it permanent. everything lined up properly there and pushing that down let's try to keep even pressure on it so it doesn't bend or break this should go all the way down to the top of the legs there, just like that. All right, and then the smaller circle is going to go on the base. Yeah, that's better. Okay, and then you can simply take some white glue or wood glue and do all the seams. Right, so I'm just going to do some quick beads here. You can either use this as is or you can paint it. All right, and then you can just kind of smear the glue around as needed. Just take and make sure everything's pushed together again. And then you can let that dry as well. Alright, this is something I have never seen quite to this extent. But there's definitely some uh, curvature here due to differential absorption of the water. Um, this doesn't mean they're ruined. 
Okay, so what I'm going to do is put a large weight over these um, and let that set overnight. And these can continue to dry out as well. The fins have been doing some heavy reading here overnight. So I'm going to go ahead and pull these off. We'll see how flat they've become. That looks much better. Okay, so these have gone pretty much back to their original shape. Um, if you need to, uh, after you sand off the excess here, you might want to put them under a heavy weight again. All right, but now all we need to do is just sand this back down until we get to bare wood. And theoretically at least, that means all of the grain here will be filled, as will um, any imperfections in our gluing and such. So I'm just going to start with some 100 grit sandpaper here. So you can see we've still got some down in here. This is where a, a low spot was. Okay, some over here. Um, and notice we're producing a lot of dust here, so I recommend having a vacuum cleaner nearby so you can periodically suck this up. All right, I'm going to go ahead and continue this one. So once you've got everything sanded flat once more, um, then go ahead and move up to 150 or 220 grit sandpaper to give it a nicer finish. Okay, so there's one of the fins all nicely sanded. Um, and if you want, you can add some more sanding sealer um, or filler to this. But with between the, the relatively tight grain of the basswood and the first coat of filler here, this looks pretty good. And after it's um, primed, I may give it some more sanding then. So I'm going to do the same thing with the other two fins. And when we come back, we'll start shaping them uh, into something resembling an airfoil. Here I have all of my fins sanded, and they've also flattened out completely, so no problems there. My next step is to round the leading edge. So here I'm going to use uh, 100 grit sandpaper to start with, and start by just knocking down the corner edges here. Okay, so this is just taking that sharp edge off, and now I'm just going to keep doing that on each side initially. Now we'll get to actually rounding things here in a moment. First I just want to get a basic shape going here, and this basswood does take a little bit longer to sand than balsa does. Okay, and I'm just going to keep checking in cross section here to make sure I don't get one side uh, more rounded than the other. And now as I do this, I'm just going to rotate my wrist a little bit to start imparting a curve. And again, we'll keep doing this on both sides. Again, go ahead and check the cross section here. <sighs> 
Okay, and then in the middle where you can't necessarily see the cross section, um, I'm looking at the stripe here, so that's what remained of the edge. So I'll just keep going until I have that stripe gone. So that's a pretty even curvature there. Maybe a little more on this edge. Okay. And that original stripe is almost completely gone. It's good enough there. Um, now I'm just going to move over to some 150 grit just to take off some of the fibers there and smooth this out. Now for the rest of my fin edges here, I'm just going to make those square. And this is always a trade-off. Okay, so if, if you want to taper the back end here and approach something like an airfoil, you can do that, but it makes this edge weaker as well. Um, and generally, you don't want to do anything with the, the tip edge anyway, just square it off. Okay, now I've got a little bit of filler kind of left right in the crack there. So here I'm just using an emery board to just briefly sand those. And for the edges back here, I'm going to use a small hobby file. fins pretty much done there. I'm going to do the other two fins off camera. Now that my fins are all filled and sanded, um, we're going to come back to the body tube here. Now remember we were doing some fixing here. Alright, so I'm going to peel this off. Okay, and now that's holding its shape much better. Still got a little flat spot there. But now if we put the nose cone on, it's much less noticeable. Okay, and again, um, if, you, if you have a, a problem like this and you don't want to go about fixing it, call Apogee. Their customer service is really good. Alright, so now we're going to mark the tube for the fins. And the tube marking guide here is on page two of the instructions. Okay, now I just want to make sure that there's nothing on here that I need. Okay, so we've already, this is just a description on this side. So um, you can either cut this out or you can make a photocopy and cut out the photocopy. this around the aft end of our tube here and so whichever end that you designated as aft All right, so just wrap that around a little bit above the um, actual end of the rocket there line up those tick marks All right, and then I'm going to masking tape that in place and get a long enough piece of masking tape that it overlaps here that'll keep this from shifting all right and then we're just going to go around and mark at each arrow here all right and then we've got this is gonna be the launch lug line so I'm just gonna draw in here lug
Alright, and then just gently remove that tape again. Okay, you probably won't need the marking guide again, but I always like to hang on to it at least until I finish the kit. Just in case I have to redo something. Alright, now I'm going to take my fin marking guide here. And if you don't have one of these, um, Estes makes them. You can also use a piece of angle aluminum. Like this. Uh, or you can use a door frame. Alright, so I'm going to turn this around where we can see it better. Alright, just double check the instructions here. Alright, according to the instructions, we need to extend these about halfway up the rocket. Okay, and that's mainly for the launch lug. But it also gives us something to align to as well. So it'll make um, sighting along the rocket easier. That's ready to go. Now the other thing we're going to need to do is measure a quarter of an inch from the aft end, or about six millimeters, and just make a little mark there. Okay, and you only need this on. Alright, and then on the launch lug line, um, we're going to measure 7 inches from the aft end. Now this only has one launch lug. Alright, so 7 inches is right there. And I'm actually going to extend that line a little farther up. Because my launch lug is fairly big here, and I want to have some more line on the end to help sight it in. So now I'm going to take a piece of sandpaper. I'm going to use 100 grit here. Um, if you don't have 100, use whatever you've got available. But here I'm just going to roughen up the tube a little bit along the line. And I kind of use a, a fin here as a bit of a guide. So this angle of the fin should be at that uh, quarter inch or six millimeter line. All right, which means my fin is going to go all the way up to here. Okay, so I'm going to mark that as well. Okay, and then on my launch lug line here, I'm just going to take the launch lug itself, use it as a guide. You want to keep all these tubes from rolling. Alright, so it's going to go to about here. So on all these lines, I'm just going to lightly sand them between my marks. And this just allows the glue to adhere better. And you notice I don't I didn't sand very hard. It's just just enough to take the gloss off here. All 
Okay, we are ready to put a fin on. So I recommend using wood glue for this. Uh, if you don't have wood glue, white glue will work. It just takes longer to dry and it's not quite as strong. Now here, we don't want this dripping. Okay, um, A lot of, especially beginners, tend to use way too much glue on the fin edges here. All right, we just want a nice even coat. Okay, and what I'm going to do now is line this up with that um, aft line in the corner and on the front here. And I'm just going to put that on the line and I'm going to take it back off again. So now I have an even thinner film of glue on both edges. And I'm going to give that about 60 seconds to get tacky and then come back and put it on. 60 seconds have passed. And now I'm going to just reattach this once more. Okay. That's why I like to get this tacky, is I can now work with this a lot easier and not worry about the fin falling off. Alright, so I'm going to line this with the line and the tube and looking straight down here. Let's see. Come on, camera, good to focus. So it looks pretty good there. Um, if you want to use a fin alignment guide to give you even straighter fins, this is the time to add it. This particular fin guide is made by Apogee. And so we're just going to slide this over. Carefully get it so that the fin goes all the way through. It does not necessarily have to go all the way to the top of the fin there. Okay. But with this in place, you can now add the other fins a lot quicker than you would if you didn't have it. So I'm going to glue on my other two fins. And then we'll come back. The glue on my fins is dry. And I removed the fin alignment guide now because we need to put the launch lug on. And you don't want to put this on while the fin alignment guide is still attached or you may not get it off. Okay, here again I'm going to go ahead and roughen up the contact point here where we're going to glue the launch lug onto our section of line here. And once again, use wood glue or white glue for this. Alright, so I'm going to get my rough spot here and run a bead of glue on that. Okay, and now I'm going to attach this. You can use the, the tacky method I showed for the fins, um, but usually it's not necessary because you don't have all the leverage on this that the fin puts on the joint. All right, once you've got that on there, go ahead and sight down the rocket and the line. Make sure everything is straight. And then just let that dry as well. Now that the fins and the launch lug are dry, we can go ahead and put on some fillets. And I like to do two facing fins at a time since they'll be up in the same direction. Okay, and so here once again uh, we can use white glue or wood glue. So I'm just going to run a bead here. All right, and then another one on the opposite facing fin. All right, and just use a finger here to smooth that in. And just have a tissue or a towel here handy. Okay, and then do the other side as well. All right, and then try and clean up any excess you may have before that dries. All right, let that dry for a few minutes and then go on to the next face and so on. And then we'll do the same thing to the launch lug here. In fact, since it's facing the same direction as those fins, I'll go ahead and do that. Alright, and 
and just as before, go ahead and smooth that in with a finger. Now some people like to have really thick fillets that uh, kind of smoothly transition into the body tube. And if you want to do that, um, don't try and do it all at once. So start with fillets like I've got here, and then build up upon those. And if you want the really thick fillets, you'll probably want to use like a um, plastic contour putty or uh, a wood filler or even a paste type epoxy. Um, it, doing it with wood glue takes a very long time and it also tends to just keep running downward. You can't, it's harder to build up a good uh, thick fillet that way. So I'm going to go off camera here as these dry. And when we come back, I'll have the other two sets of fins done, too. I skipped over putting the motor mount in. According to the instructions, um, this should go in before we put the fins on. I'm going to do it afterward. It doesn't really make a lot of difference. And so what I'm going to do here first is just wrap the shock cord around my fingers like this. And I'm going to stuff that down inside the motor mount tube so that it's out of the way and we don't get glue in it. Okay, and it's coming out the other side, but that's fine. Okay, so just kind of get the shock cord out of the way. Now when we put this in, uh, it's going to be flush with the aft end of the body tube. And so I'm going to put a ring of glue up inside the body tube. And I'm just going to use a, a, an applicator here. And what I want to do is have that ring um, slightly aft of where this ring is going to go so that when we push it in there the ring will go through that glue. And then we'll put another ring of glue on the aft end here but not until after we get the forward end of the motor mount in. Okay, so I've got here on my applicator my thumbnail is marking where that uh, is going to stop. All right, so now I'm just going to coat this with glue. Okay, I think I'm going to move this up just a little bit here. All right, so now I'm going to put this in through the middle until I reach my thumbnail here, and then I'm going to rotate it around the inside. Okay, I'm going to do that twice because it's that's a lot of surface area in there. So I'm going to put another blob of glue on my applicator and do this once more. Okay, So now I'm going to insert this just past the aft end there. Okay, And now I'm going to put glue right on the aft end here. So just inside the edge. And this is what will glue the aft motor mount ring into position. Okay, and just be careful to make sure that we get all the glue inside there. We don't want any on the outside. Okay, and now I'm going to push this in all the way. And this one thing that is easier here if you do this before you put the fins on. All right, that's binding a bit there. Hold on. All right, we're running into a problem here. I think we're getting some cardboard swelling. Right, so if you, you put the, the fins on after the motor mount, you can just squish this against the table or something to make sure it's flush. I'll just use a ruler there. Okay, and so now, because I had to move that, um, I lost some of my glue strength there. So now I'm going to just put a fillet of glue right around that seam. Okay, I'll 
also try and move this around so it's even. All right. So that was a little bit of difficulty there, but not something that was insurmountable. Okay, and so I'm going to let that dry, and then we should be getting pretty close to doing the motor retainer. The glue on the motor mount has dried enough that I can work on it without any problems. And as I uh, said earlier in the video, um, the instructions call for just using a friction fit for the motor mount here. Um, I'm going to use this Estes 24mm screw-on retainer. Now, in the instructions it does say that if you're going to do this, um, to use some um, cyanoacrylate or super glue to put this on. If you are going to use super glue, then I recommend using a gel type and not the really runny stuff. Um, you can also use 5-minute epoxy for this, and that's what I'm going to do here. So I'm going to make up just a little bit of epoxy, and I'll be right back. Now before I apply the epoxy, I'm going to take my ring here. This is the, the inner ring that will attach to the motor mount. And um, you can do this with both epoxy or with the gel type super glue. But take some sanding paper. Move that out of the way. Take some sanding paper and just roughen up the inside of that thread, threaded part here where it's going to contact the motor mount tube. And then you can also go ahead and just roughen up the motor mount tube a little bit. Doesn't take a lot. Okay, just a couple of strokes as you go around there. Oops, don't do that. Okay, and now I'm going to go ahead here and take the epoxy And I'm going to apply that around the motor mount. All right. Be very careful not to get it down inside the motor mount. If you do, wipe it off immediately. All right. But if you have a little bit of excess, it's all going to get pushed toward the bottom. So it will help strengthen the overall motor mount as well. Okay, and now I'm just going to slide this on, give it a turn back, back and forth here a little bit, make sure it's centered, and we'll just let that harden. 